Welcome to the Inside Syracuse Basketball Podcast. I'm Mike Waters. Today on the podcast, I'm joined by Syracuse legend Stephen Thompson. Thompson is an assistant coach at Oregon State, where he coached his sons, Stephen Jr. and Ethan. I talked with him about coaching his sons and what Syracuse coach Jim Beheim will face this season with sons Buddy and Jimmy on the Syracuse roster. I also asked Stephen about that 1987 loss to Indiana in the national championship game and what it's like to receive an alley-oop pass from the legendary Sherman Douglas. Stevie, how you doing? Doing great, doing great, They're getting ready. It's about that time, it's go time again, and it's uh, time to get ready for another season. So, so this is, to me, always the best time of the year, so I'm feeling good. You know, just before we hit the record button on the podcast, you and I were reminiscing like a couple of old hands here, talking about, you know, how long ago it was that I covered you. Um, my first year on this beat was your junior year at Syracuse. Mm-hmm. Sometimes that seems like a long time ago. And then when we start talking about some of the games you played in, I can remember it like it was yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's the same here. It's uh, uh, those, the, the time there and the memories is there and, and, and the competition playing in the big East. I mean, it's, it can't help but be memorable. So I, I, I can remember some of these games, like it was like the back of my hand. So Time flies though, because that's God. So 80, 88, 89 was my junior year. So we're aging ourselves right there. <laughs> well, you may be. I, I was 10 years old when I started working at the post. <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll get to some of those games in your career uh, eventually here. But you know, I wanted to start out with something. Uh, this season at Syracuse, Jim Beheim is going to coach a team that includes two of his sons, both Jimmy and Buddy. And this is something that you have experience with. What's it like to coach your own kids at the college level? Uh, it's, it's, first of all, it's very, it, the, the good side is very gratifying. Um, of course, you know, not, not everybody has an opportunity, to, uh, coaches have an opportunity to coach their kids. And it was just a blessing for me to be able to have this opportunity. And um, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade it in for anything. And um, it could become difficult though, because you, you have, you, 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 you can't put away your dad hat, right. But you have to try to, because you're coaching. And so uh, you have to really focus in and know at, at that moment, your job is to coach your team and help give your team the best, uh, uh, a chance to win and be successful on the court. So you can't worry that sons are out there playing and how they're doing and how they're feeling. So you got to put that dad hat away and make sure you're doing the, uh, uh, the best for overall for the team. Your oldest son, Stephen Jr., was the first to, to go to Oregon State. Mm-hmm. Take me through the timeline there because it was about that time that you were moving from being the head coach at Cal State, Cal State LA yep. to go yep. up to Corvallis, right? Yep. Yeah. So, so I, was, uh, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was nine years as the head coach at Cal State LA. And then uh, going into uh, in June of 2014, which was ending Stephen Jr.'s junior year of high school, going into his senior year is when I got the job here at Oregon State. And I thought it was, I thought it was the right time. Once again, I, I've been blessed to have some, some good situations come my way and being able to coach at Cal State LA, which is a lot of people don't know about division two basketball, very, very tough competitive league, a lot of good coaches and a lot of good players uh, to come out of there. So I was had a great opportunity to be able to coach there for 12 years, three as an assistant and nine as the head. But of course, uh, and, and when I say that is because my family, you know, I had just finished playing professional ball. My family was young and being able to be in one place, raising my kids and, and, and being there was, was great. And so uh, by the time Steven Jr. now is going into his senior year and I'm Ethan is going into his sophomore year in high school, I thought it was a good time to maybe look to make the jump to the division one level. And uh, uh, of course, there's still a lot of raising of your kids, but we had got them to a really good point to, to, to where they were at, where I felt comfortable 
to, to go and, and pursue this opportunity. And, um, uh, and, then, and then I knew going to the level that I was going to, there could be a good chance that maybe I can coach Steven Jr. and, and possibly Ethan uh, you know, down the road a little bit. Because when I first took the job here, they stayed because they wanted to finish high school at Bishop Montgomery High School in Los Angeles. So the, my wife stayed back and she was still a vice principal at a, a small Christian school in Los Angeles. And, and I came up here, you know, on my own. But I think one of the, the, the things that also saved us is the, the fact that I knew in the back of my mind if we did a good job of recruiting, we can get the boys. So that, that, that time period where I was away from them, I, I, I said, I can get it back, you know, and during the college years, but, mm -hmm. but, uh, and, you know, normally you don't, you don't have that, you know, your kids always usually go off to college, but, um, but, uh, and then secondly, uh, uh, being able to um, recruit that while I was away from them, I recruited a lot in LA. So I was down there at least once a month, you know, all through the time I was away from them. So I saw them during that opportunity, those opportunities. And plus it was only like an hour and a half, two hour flight. So they would come up and visit me as much as possible as well. So that kind of softened the blow, having those opportunities to see them while we were apart. And then another thing that we didn't have back in 88 and 89 was FaceTime. So FaceTime every night, you know, so... So that, that, that helped, that helped during that process. You know, when, when you're, when your kids join you at Oregon state, the one difference between your situation there and what Jim Beheim's going to have, Jim Beheim's the head coach. He's yeah. going to determine who starts, who plays, yeah. who gets yeah. taken out yeah. playing yeah. time. Yeah. I mean, you didn't have that. Right. Yeah. So yeah. did you, what were those coaches meetings like uh, with you and, 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 and coach Tingle? No, uh, you know, once again, when you when you get in those meetings, it's the, these aren't sons because it, the interesting thing about our situation is Coach Tinkle's son was on the team as well during Stephen and Ethan's year. So you had three coaches' sons there, but uh, those weren't really the things because all three of the kids can play. So you know, it wasn't like um, anybody was doing any favors and, or, or that. You know, it's it's all three kids can play and, and, you know, if they continue to work hard, which they did, all three of those kids were hard workers and leaders of the teams, captains of the teams and all that. So from that standpoint of at least playing time, you know, it was no, no issues there because they know too growing up that you have to earn, you know, and that's a motto here at, or that we have at Oregon state, you, you, you earn what you get. And so, they knew that they had to come out and work hard and even extra hard uh, uh, in order to, you know, get the minutes and get the get the opportunities that they had here. So that 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 standpoint was was not an issue. Was it ever hard on Stephen Jr. and Ethan as as sons of a coach? And, and you mentioned, you know, uh, Trey Tinkle there, too, yeah. another son of the coach. Was it ever hard on them like when when? coach was yelling or mad or, you know, one of those times during the season and, you know, maybe some of the other players are grousing about, <laughs> you yeah, know, I a, mean, a, a practice. Yeah, yeah, probably, you know, I, I, boy, it's just funny because when, when in practice or anything basketball related team, Oregon state, we, we kept it, coach and son right I mean coach and player right then if they would come to the house and my wife would make them a meal or help them do laundry or whatever happens then we take off the coaching hat and now we become dad right but for us you're still going to end up talking about basketball because that's our lives and you know and and so um I think you know from their standpoint it probably had to be difficult at some point because it at at some, somebody's probably said, oh, he's getting that because he's the coach's son or this is happening because he's the coach's son and all that. But I think those guys were strong enough leaders, strong enough young men to where, you know, they were able to, to communicate with their teammates and to talk with their teammates. And then at the end of their day, their teammates understood because 
they were good players and they were leaders of the team. It wasn't once again, like, like anything was given to them, but I'm pretty sure they had their days where, man, you know, the one thing that, that probably was difficult is if I'm jumping down another player's throat, that player might go to my son, man, your dad is a jerk, you know, or your dad, I can't stand. So, you know, I, I would have to think those conversations probably were the most difficult ones. <clears throat> Well, lucky Coach Behan doesn't ever yell at anybody. Right? Well, yeah, 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 yeah. He, you know, actually, I will say this: tomorrow. he yells a little more than now than he did when he coached us. Uh, that that that's what I've seen. More now, because usually players, you know, old hands like yourself and Derek Coleman, they they want to tell me like how much tougher Beheim was back in that day. Uh, yeah, well, you just, no. you just reversed I, it on me. Yeah, I, I yeah, I think, I think. I think I, I, I see him getting into players and, and letting them have it a little more, you know, and once again, I'm watching it through the screen and that's my vision of it. And I, I, I'm comparing it to when I was actually sitting there in a timeout with him. So I think it's, I think he's doing a little more, you know, uh, as he goes on in his coaching than he did early on. Well, actually he never had to yell at you. And there's a, there's a story <laughs> about that. Like yeah. I forget which player it was. It was might have been Derek yep. Coleman. Yep. Complaining to Coach Beheim about how much he was yelling at him and stuff and correcting him. And how come you never yell at Stevie Thompson? Yep. 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 And Jim's response was, he never does anything wrong. I don't have to yell at him. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. That's a great compliment by coach. Thank you, coach. <laughs> but I do remember that. I do remember that. I'm glad you remember it. That way people yeah. don't think I just make these things no, up. No, you didn't make it up. But I will say this too. DC did a whole bunch of, whole, a whole lot right as well. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, You know what was uh, interesting last March? Syracuse had a great run to the Sweet 16. Yeah. Buddy Beheim played great. Mm -hmm. uh, but they got bumped by Houston. Yep. But had they beaten Houston? Yep it would have set up a matchup between Syracuse and your Oregon yep. state Beavers in the yep. elite eight. Yeah. Yeah. Were you, were you hoping for that or were you dreading that? No, I, I was, I was, well, for surely now that we lost to Houston, I was definitely hoping for it. <laughs> so, <laughs> but that was my scout. So how this, how this works is uh, I think, yeah, we, we must've won first. So we knew we were going to the elite eight game and then, Houston and Syracuse played after us. So another coach took Houston and I took Syracuse. And so I was, I was prepared. I was getting prepared for this game. I had the, I had the game plan ready. And I, you know, being a former player of coach Bayheim, I knew what, I know how he thinks and I know what is mine. So I was ready for that game. So I would have loved it, you know, going up against, you know, I've, I've dreamed, I've dreamt about that before. We kind of went up against each other when I was in exhibition games, when I was at Cal State LA, but that was, that's not what I was dreaming about. The, the dreams were about in the big show going head to head. And, and, and it almost came true. I would have loved to see, I would have loved to play against, I would have loved to play against Syracuse. And Oregon State yeah. with yourself and Ethan leading the way, because Ethan yeah. was having a great tournament. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bayheim and Buddy, yeah. on, I mean, the, the yeah. storylines, the right. stories would have written themselves. Yeah. yeah. How about that, though? I mean, I, they, I guess everybody was staying in the same hotel, but it just, I think I called, I think I called Coach Bayheim, and it just was how unbelievable, you know, his son, he and his son doing what they were doing in the tournament. Ethan and I doing what we're doing in a tournament, you know, when we're back in the, like you say, in the eighties, you don't, you don't, you don't think that will happen, you know, and, and it's sitting here playing out 30, what is it? 30 years later, or however long later it is. And, and, you know, I was happy for him, happy for buddy, you know, happy for his other son as well. Actually, I kind of, I talked to him a little bit, uh, uh, trying to see if I can get him out here to Oregon state. And, um, but I, you know he's going to have a heck of a year there as well. So I, I it's exciting. I'm ex, I'm happy for them and you know Coach Beheim coaching all these years and now being able to coach both his sons. I mean, they're, they're, it's, it's going to be great great time there this season. Now, back it up there. Uh, yeah. 
You said you talked to Jimmy Beheim about coming to Oregon State? Yeah, just a couple times. I, I, I just, I reached out and, um, you know, we had, we, we, we had had some guys uh, that, that were on last year's team that were kind of in the same position, but, uh, what, but I still wanted to reach out because I, I th you know, he's going to help Syracuse. He definitely could have helped us as well. But then as it went on, it kind of, you know, to be honest with you, for me, it, it looked like it would, it would make sense for him to go play for his dad. So I kind of didn't, uh, you know, didn't think I could win that battle, you know? And so, uh, but I, I, I do you know during that process, watching his games, looking at him in the, in the recruiting realm, uh, man, he's a good player himself, you know, and, and, He'll, he'll once again have a good, I don't know what it, I guess, is it, does he have one or two years? I don't, with the COVID year, I don't know what, you know, how, what year anybody is anymore. So, yeah. um, but whatever it is, he'll have, he'll have a, it, it'll be fun to have them both on the court. Yeah, as I understand it, and it doesn't sound fair to me, he's yeah. only going to have one more year that yeah. the, the year the Ivy League didn't play, yep. none of those Ivy League kids are going to get that year back. Oh, wow. wow. Um, again, it just doesn't seem wow. fair if they were at any yeah. other division one school, yeah, yeah, they would yeah. have got it. Yeah. Um, but because the Ivy doesn't play at all, they're basically being penalized for sitting out. Wow. So, so this wow. will be Jimmy's one and only year at Syracuse. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. It's interesting. A lot of people are questioning, you know, yeah. what he's going to be able to do at, yeah. at this level after spending yeah. three years at the Ivy, yeah. but you were interested in him. You were, you yeah. were willing, you were, you were wanting, how do you think he's going to do? Uh, taking the step up to a ACC play? Well, he can play basketball and see a lot of times uh, uh, people, how should I put this? He's going to be successful because he knows the game. Meaning what I mean by his skill set, his feel, his IQ, that's going to put him on the same level of anybody on the ACC. All right. So, you know, there might be somebody that might be faster, or jumps higher and all those things, but how playing the game, I think a lot of people um, miss that, that you still have to know how to play the game. And that's where he will jump heads and shoulders above a lot of people. And, and now he's playing in a system with all power five players and all that. It's just going to make him look better. So, you know, people can say that, I don't know, you know, I think the basketball purists will understand how he fits in and then when you can shoot the ball he can shoot when you can shoot in this game and coach Beheim does a good job of spacing the floor getting his shooters open he's going he, he he's going to he's going to play he's going to be productive um you know uh, uh it's funny now because every once in a while somebody like we'll be on a road trip or something and one of the players would be like oh coach Thompson you're on ESPN classic right and then I, I may turn the game on and all 10 players are inside of the three point line on all, you know, and it's like, man, this is a different game to watch. I mean, if you watch some of those games against us in Georgetown, us in Connecticut, it's like, let's throw the ball up and whoever gets the rebound and puts it back in, that's the winner of the game. And, and, but now when you look at it and, 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 and you look at Beheim's offense in particular, I mean, the, the floor is spread, you know, he's able to, to work, you know, to everybody's strength. Um, so I, I, once again, I think Jimmy would do great, you know, well, let's, and, let's and spend he's the type of kid and he's the type of kid. If he's hearing that just by watching him through the, through the short time that I was taking a look at him, mm -hmm. he's going to prove, he's going to want to prove, and he is going to prove, you know, that's going to be a, 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 a passion of his to prove people wrong. So that, that you, you know, I, I look forward to big things from him. A passion for proving people wrong. Hmm, yeah, that's yeah. probably a family trait. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yep. Um, let's go a little bit. I've got to talk about your career and, and, and everything at SU. I can't let you out of here without reminiscing a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, you scored over 1,900 points at Syracuse. Yep. You, you finished your career third on the school's all-time scoring list. Yep. You never led the team in scoring in any of your four years here. Yep, yep. I think that's remarkable. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, <laughs> it's, when I look back, 
right? And when you're playing and you're young, like a lot of people don't know this. My first college games, I was 17 years old. I didn't turn 18 until December of my freshman year. Wow. But I think when I did the math, I think I played with, including myself, at least eight guys that touched an NBA floor. And so <laughs> now you're, you're talking about some supreme talent, you know, because it's very hard. People can say what they want and this, I mean, it's hard to make it to the NBA just because there's only a certain amount of jobs available. And, and, but to play with eight guys that touch the NBA floor, you probably won't, you know, you'll see that in some programs, but not many. And, and, and when I look back and, you know, see some of the highlight plays or some of the plays, these guys I played with were really good players. I mean, you know, some of the things that Derek Coleman could do and Billy Owens can do at their size, I mean, is, is unbelievable. Ronnie Cycli, I thought I was, a, you know, and I, I, I not thought I, I was a good, and I, it's an operative word there, was. I was a good athlete. And, but I get to campus and Ronnie Cycli is 6'10 and can run faster than me and jump higher than me. I mean, this is, you know, this is some talented people, the things that Sherman Douglas can do with the ball. I mean, you know, and even he, him there, I mean, he didn't even play much his freshman year, you know? No. So he's behind a great player like Pearl Washington, you know? So for him to come in in the last three years to do what he did, it's kind of, you look back and it's really surreal to, to, to have played with this caliber player. And, and, and mm. it's, just a, it's just a blessing to be in, you know, in, in talks with that, those type of guys. And, and really, if I, to be honest with you though, if I shot, you know, 80% of my free throws, I'd have, I would have been past all those guys. So I, I always look back at that. I, I, I had 1956, right? And I mean, I was 44. I mean, I missed way more than 44 free throws while I was there, but I, I would have been in the 2000 club. And that's another thing I wish I could have got to as well. <laughs> but, but, but I'm telling you brought you, up I, the free throw, Stevie, not me. Yeah. yeah I, you know, I, 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 it's part of who I, it's part of my fiber, you know, and what I can say, the things that I learned, that's why I taught my kids to, these are the things that, you know, they're already talented on their own, but, you know, to, you know, I look at that, you said 19, over 1900 points, and my two sons are both over 1700 points. I think Stephen Jr. is the fifth, I think he graduated as the fourth all-time leading scorer here at Oregon State, and I think he may be fifth now, and I think uh, Ethan finished as the eighth all-time leading scorer, so if wow. you look at the Thompsons, you know, we put up a lot of points in, in college basketball, but I think you go through some things so you can teach others. And not only, you know, just teaching my sons, but every player that I've coached ever since I began coaching, trying to teach them the things to help them, to, you know, to reach. Really, my goal, everybody's not going to be a professional basketball player, right? But my goal as a coach is to give them all the tools, because if there's a chance, I want them to be prepared to take advantage of their opportunity if it comes up. So everything that every piece of knowledge that I've learned as a player, a coach, that's what I infuse into every player that I coach. And your sons are now yeah. professional basketball players. Steven yeah. Jr. is going back to Italy, right? Yep. Yeah, he's and in Italy up. right now. Yep. Yep. Uh, Serie A, right? Yep. Yep. And, yep. and is Ethan going to camp with the Chicago yeah, Bulls? So he's in Chicago right now. He's, uh, Sign that Exhibit Ten contract with the Bulls, so he'll. I think. I think he's. You know, he's out there working out now, and then camp starts the twenty eighth. So he'll be. He's. He's ready to go for that challenge as well. And you know, both of those guys have. Once again, I'll. I'll. I'll, I'll take my hat off to him because it's not always easy. So you know, for trying to. The dad played and all this and all that, and they've always had to always hear these comparisons, not only with me, but. Ethan compared to Steven, Steven compared to, it's, 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 they've had to go through this their whole life, but this is something they wanted. And, and, you know, when, when, when I, when they were young, I tried to always put them in, you know, baseball, you know, uh, football and basketball, because I didn't want to force basketball on them, but 
being though of probably it just gravitated to it because that's you know I don't want to say that's because I am it's something made them gravitate to it so now once I knew that's what they wanted to do hey I'm gonna give you everything that I have you know and let's see what you can do with it and now they're both you know right on the cusp of you know well both of them are professional basketball players but you know still with great opportunity to even make it to the NBA so it's it's uh it's once again been a blessing to 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 see them go through that and to see them live out living out their dreams I should say what's it like being on the receiving end of a Sherman Douglas alley-oop path oh I mean I once again I I was I was blessed my in high school. I had a point guard named David Carter. He would throw the lob really great. Right. So that's why I think I learned how to, how to, how, how to receive him, Right. But now catching him with 30,000 in the gym and, you know, on national TV and really the, the, he was so good at the different ways he can throw the lob pass. And, you know, he could throw it from distance overhead you know, he was great at that. We used to call him Koozie because Bob Koozie used to have a dribble move where he came in and kind of the lane and kind of floated up a shot, right? And right. make it. But Sherman Douglas was good at doing that same move and he would float up. Sometimes it would be a shit because he would fool the defense. Sometimes he would do the little float shot. And then <laughs> other times he would do the same move, float and do the float lob. And so he really confused the defense, but man, it was just like a, a, a connection we had, you know, and, and not only with me, I mean, it was, he had it with Coleman and, 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 uh, uh, cycling as well. But, but, but boy, for me, it was, it was just, you know, if I knew I cut to the basket or ran the floor or, or those things, I knew I was going to get that pass or that lob from him. And this was a special time, you know, I've never seen anybody throw it better. Yeah, no. But you know I, what? I, Aside I from the lob, the one Sherman Douglas pass to Stevie Thompson that stands yeah. out over four yeah. years is the one yeah. at the Garden against Indiana. Yeah, yeah. Where he he takes the loose ball. Yeah. And with his back to you, he snaps it like a long snapper in football. Yeah. Yep. And hits you in stride. Yep. Yep. I, I mean. I, did you even think he knew where you were? I, you no, know, at the time, I well, it didn't, well, first of all, it didn't surprise me, right? Because, <laughs> you know, some of the passes he, you know, most people are only seeing him pass during games, right? But I saw these passes in practice and he had a lot to his passing package. And, and so it didn't surprise me. And, but it was funny because if you look at that, Matt Rowe is like kind of even with me or maybe even a step ahead. Yeah, Matt Rowe, you're not going. I'm going down in history to finish this dunk right here. You're not going to go down in his. I'm going down in history for that one. So he shouldn't even ask for that one. <laughs> so, but yeah, that was special. Because That's so funny you mentioned Matt Rowe. I actually had it in my notes, yeah. like to ask you if you ever even briefly considered passing the. <laughs> no, no. You can tell by my answer to this day. I was. Matt, I instilled it. Matt, why are you even looking like you wanted? You wasn't getting that ball from me. <laughs> and you know, but plays like that, you're asking me, I think you asked something early. What do I remember? See, those are like, those plays bring chills down your spine because first of all, that play is in Madison Square Garden. Mm -hmm. And then that was, I don't even, do they have the preseason NIT tournament? Yeah, they still have it, don't they? Yeah. But it's, but back then, it, I mean, they have a lot of tournaments now, but back then that was like the, the, the cream of the crop tournament to play in. And right. so making a play like that in Madison Square Garden against an irate Bobby Knight, who at that time, you know, we're trying to get payback from the, you know, the national championship game, who, by the way, that's another game we should have, you know, up 39 minutes and 30 seconds of that game and you know i'm sitting over on the bench saying we're going to see the president but but anyway being <laughs> able to play him in that game make that play in the garden which by the way was like our second home i guess you're not in the big east anymore but it was like when we went to the garden to play st john's and the big east tournament that was like our home you know uh, uh there but but i think that we gave 
Bobby Knight to that point. And I don't know if anybody did more. I think that was his worst loss in his history uh, to that point. So that, yeah, that's a special play. Yeah, that was a cool one. Um, yeah. You mentioned that 87 game though against Indiana and you were a freshman yep. coming off the bench that year. Yep. That, that had to be brutal. Because yeah. you guys were on a roll. You'd beaten Florida with Dwayne Sinchis. Yeah. You had beaten yeah. North Carolina with J.R. Reed and Scott yeah. Williams. Yep. Yeah. And here you and then in the final four, I think you just blew past Providence. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, with Billy the Kid and yeah. uh, Delray Brooks. Um, yeah. and then you run into a tough Indiana team. But yeah. you guys had to really think that you are, I mean, and you were right there at the end. You had a chance. Yeah. No, that had we, to be we, devastating. We, yeah, we had more than it. We were winning that whole time and we were up we were the we were the more aggressive team what hurt us is I think I think we missed the front end of a one and one and I think we missed one out of two so there's three points right there and you know and then Keith Smart who ended up my rookie year of playing professional sports was my teammate in the CBA uh hits a shot angled kind of behind the backboard. That was a tough angle. It wasn't straight on corner. It was kind of behind the backboard. He hits a tough shot, you know? So yeah, I mean, it, it was a great run, but boy, you, you know, you, I, I don't like regret. And some of these things I may be saying it is, it's definitely not regret. It just was an exciting time. And of course you wish you had that national championship, but Man, it was it was a it was a it was a great run. It was a great run, and and one one of the big things for me was uh, a, a a big part of of like my highlights as a as a in in basketball because I kind of throw player and coach into the just the basketball career, but uh, playing in fifteen. NCAA tournament games. I mean, that's that's a lot of NCAA tournament games to play in in somebody's career. Sure. And so having an opportunity to play in that many games was uh, was a blessing. But that's something I wanted, you know, growing up. I mean, uh, when my kids were young, if they were going to play basketball, I wanted them to be able to experience playing in the NCAA tournament. And both of them did. Stephen Jr.'s freshman year, we made it to the NCAA tournament and we lost that uh, and now I think that was the first time in 30 years that this program had been to the NCAA tournament. So wow. his freshman year, you know, he played significant minutes and, and boy, he had a couple game winners and, and he did some really good things as a freshman to help us get to that point. And um, uh, but, but having both my kids and then, you know, Ethan, you know, we saw the run he just went through last season, having having them having them having the opportunity to play in the uh, NCAA tournament was, was huge. Well, and we'll get to see this season. Yeah. If the Bayheim family yep. is able to duplicate the, the Thompson yeah. family and, and yep. get uh, a father and two sons all into yep. the uh, NCAA, because Jimmy Jr. Jimmy has not gone yet. So they haven't. Okay. Yeah. yeah. They got uh, Jimmy's Jimmy's got to get there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what this uh, and all these conferences, you know, I was getting ready to say the power five conference, but all these conferences, once, once you get into conference play, it's tough. And, you know, just like the PAC 12, but the ACC, I, I mean, man, it's how many teams is it in the ACC now? You just, every night, you know, you've got to 15. <laughs> well, yeah. So yeah. Is your, is your, is that, is the, are they a 20 or 22, 20 conference games? 20 regular season games. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So Conference. it's tough you know it's tough but i mean yeah Bay Bayheim knows how to get yeah, Bayheim knows how to get there so now you know I, i'm putting the pressure on coach Bayheim. you got both your sons you better get them to the promised land <laughs> well um i know for a fact he listens to some of these podcasts every once yeah. in a while stevie yeah. so um yeah. we'll, yeah. we'll see when he responds to that yeah let's see if uh, i get a text stevie shut no no be quiet i got too much pressure on me now <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, if this has been a pleasure, we could go on all day, yep. but yep. we have to stop at some point. I yep. want to thank you for your time. Yep. It's always a pleasure. I tell people all the time uh, that, it, you know, that I've had a, the, 
the privilege of covering a lot of great players mm -hmm. at Syracuse, uh, but none have shown uh, more class uh, both on and off the court uh, than mm -hmm. you. And uh, yeah. you were a pleasure to cover. And it's just been uh, so much fun to watch you, you know, forge your coaching career and now at Oregon yeah. State. And, yeah. you know, the last thing we got to get done is we, uh, we got to get you back to the Dome sometime for another yeah. game. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And, you know, I appreciate you too. Like you said, you've been doing this and covering SU for a long time. And then you've always, even in my time away, you've always followed me to make, checking to see how things are going and always kept me in the loop on what's going on. So I do appreciate your work and, and what you do as well. Well, thanks a lot, Steve. Yep. I appreciate it. And uh, good luck to the Beavers this season. Uh, we'll be yep. following along every step All of right. the way. All right. Thank you.